Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to build a Harry Potter style wand. This one's not fashioned after any one particular Harry Potter character, but uh, it, it's got a combination of a couple. But it's the process that I went through to make this. This is the second one I've made. Uh, this one was requested by a customer. So let's get into it about how I went about making this Harry Potter style wand. Thanks for tuning in. I'm starting with a piece of scrap walnut. I like it because it's got a little sapwood and a little heartwood both in it. It's a little character. But we're going to cut this down to about 3 eighths by 3 eighths. Maybe a little more than 3 eighths by 3 eighths. Okay, so we got a 3 eighths by 3 eighths. Now I'm just going to work on rounding it off. Yeah, I've got one. I rounded one end off on my spindle sander. I'm gonna, I've got it chucked up in a drill and I got the, the drill clamped to my workbench here, but I'm just gonna round this over a little bit. I don't want it perfectly round. It's gonna be kind of a random thing. So I'm basically knocking the edge off right now. Right, I've kind of got it close to what I want. It's, I don't want it perfect. Now what will happen is I'll, I'll build this up in with some polymer clay and this will be the handle. And of course we'll taper this down a little bit more on the spindle sander. I'm going to continue to shape our wand over on the spindle sander a little bit. Well, today we're going to form the handle of our wand. I'm going to do that with some molding epoxy. This is used by sculptures and it's got a two hour open time. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below that gives me a long time to shape and mold and then it cures nice and hard and I can paint it to, to where the wand will look authentic. It's a two-part epoxy, A and B, equal amounts. But before we do that, we need to mark off what we want. So this is going to be our handle. This overall wand is 14 and a half inches long. I'm going to make the handle roughly three inches. But I don't want it a conventional shape. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to sketch in some lines as to what I want. I want it to droop down a little bit to be kind of irregular, if you will. Kind of irregular. There's not a right and a wrong. It's whatever whatever you want. So you can see here, and I may change this, but you can see here it comes up on this side. I'm going to come up just a little more, I think. It comes up on the back side, and then down here on the front side, we might even droop it down just a little more. Again, there's not a right and a wrong. It's whatever you want. So I've got a guideline of where I want to put my epoxy. Okay, we'll start. I'm wearing gloves, obviously, because it's an epoxy product. But I'll start with a small amount of both A and B. And then we'll actually knead it together or meet it together, whatever that bacon term is. Pretty close to equal pieces. Seal the jars back up. 
and we start by just mixing these all up and again like I said this particular epoxy you don't have to hurry you've got an hour and a half or so to apply it and then do any details that you want to do and we'll talk we'll show you details in a little bit first thing I want to do is get our rough outline on the handle okay I've got it pretty well mixed up you can see the color we'll take a piece of it and we'll start at this end I want the I want this this back end edge if you will to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to actually round this off some. We're about the exact shape later. Take me another piece. Continue our shaping. This is pretty much the base coat. I might come back and build this up a little bit and put a little knob on the end. Don't know yet. Okay, so that's the beginnings of it. Now, we define this. Now we'll work, work our epoxy to kind of fit our outline a little bit that we define. We had a little droop there. So you can shape this pretty much however you want. There was our coming up from the back. So you can see there's our outline that we, we had it drooping down and we had it coming up. A little bit of irregularity there. Build this handle up just a little bit. Put a little ring around it. Okay, we're going to work on this handle just a little more going to try to give it just a little bit more definition and I may flatten it off at the top. I took a piece and rounded it off. I'm going to knead this into the, the top part of the handle a little bit. really want this handle to have a flat effect up here, but I want to build it up to that. use a little tool here to help us flatten that handle up. Okay, there's my flat top that I want. And then we'll come in here and I want a little ridge just below it. Okay, so we've got our, our flat part. And now I'll just work this down from there. Again, you can make it look layered or whatever you want. I'm going to run our little circle right across what we made. There. And we're going to flatten it up again. Roll that edge down just a touch. Okay, we've got the handle pretty much like I like it. We've got it kind of flattened off at the top. It flares out just a little bit, a couple of little ridges. And I started adding a couple of um, oh, accent marks or usage marks, character marks we'll call them. And I just took a blade and I just delicately touched the epoxy, making an indention in it. I'm going to do it 
go in both directions if you will and I'm a, I came back and I went this way just a little bit. Now I'm going to blend these in just a little bit. Went a little deep. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now we just need to re-blend this area right here. That's pretty much what I'm going to leave it with for now. I'll let this cure and see what it looks like. Okay. To decorate or to finish our handle, I'm going to paint the handle uh, brown with uh, acrylic paint gonna start with a brown and then I'm gonna come in and do some highlighting that we'll get to in just a second but first we'll just get it brown all right now we're gonna come back in with some yellow and with a fairly dry brush too, kind of dry it out a little bit and I'm just going to highlight those indentions that we did Our objective here was to get the yellow into the crevices, which we, we have done, and then, and then wipe it off as much as possible so it just leaves it in the crevice. And again, like I said, not to worry because we're going to come back with one final top coat. This is an ever so damp paper towel that I'm using to remove the excess. You just have to play with you know, develop your own process for this and, and get a feel for your colors and the saturation and things of that nature. And again, it's not, not a right or a wrong, it's what you want. Okay, our final color is going to be kind of a mixture. We're going to go back to the brown that we use for the initial base coat. By the way, this is a, just a piece of marble. It makes a real good mixing stone. It washes off. We're going to do quite a bit of brown and then we're going to do just a, just a drop of black and then about twice as much red as I had black. Trying to get that wine color, if you will, or close to it. I'm going to load the brush up, and then I'm going to unload it. Because I don't want this color to get into the to get into the crevices again. It's not quite the wine color I wanted, but but it's that older look that I want. Well, here is our finished product. I apologize for the quality of this. Detail doesn't get picked up. Let's look at the handle first. We went through all of the detail to make the handle look old with our ribs. Of course, we fash you saw us fashion that with the molding clay. And then the walnut wand with the, both the sapwood and the heartwood. It actually looks better in person than it appears on camera. But that is our wand. And just to give you a quick view of the 
box that we made for it. I didn't show this, but we have a wizard in training with four spells listed on the top and uh, a couple of Harry Potter images, uh, Hogwarts Hogwarts logo and Gryffindor, Huff and Puff, Ravenclaw and Slytherin there and it slides open one stores in its custom holder and then closes up hope you enjoyed this video thanks we appreciate it and everybody have a good day and be safe